How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, we kick off our Week 12 coverage the way that we always kick off our week's coverage. We're going to take a look at the Bears' Week 12 opponents, reigning from the NFC North, of course, the Green Bay Packers. The Bears will face off with the Packers this weekend on Sunday Night Football November 29th should be a very good game after Thanksgiving Day weekend, and we've got a special one for you today. Welcome back to the show, guys. I am your host, Chris Malpe. Today, to talk about the Packers, I am joined with my co-host, Parth Shaw. Parth, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I just got back from the gym. I saw number 10 was named the starter, so a little excited for that, I guess, but yeah. Yeah, and joined by us today, you guys have been requesting that we get guests back on this show for quite some time, and we've got a very good one today. He's making his second appearance on the show. He's the host of the Ramblin' Matt Ram- Ramage podcast, and he is back today to talk about his favorite rivalry in sports. Matt Ramage, welcome to the show. How's it going, buddy? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. So let's hop right into it. Matt, you heard it earlier, as Parth said It looks like the Bears are going to be moving back to Mitchell Trubisky in this game after eight weeks of Nick Foles as their starter. What do you think about this move, and do you think that this is a good choice for the Bears? Um, I I I don't know. Like, I I saw that where they were saying that Trubisky looks good and he looks like he's got all his uh like he he has different feel for him. But I don't know. As a Packer fan, I don't I don't have any trust in in Trubisky really. Not not this year. I think that. I, and I'm not going to like bash the Bears. I know that the Bears podcast, no one wants to listen to me just shit on the Bears. <laughs> but like, uh, I think it's bad for a quarterback when they get benched and then they get put back in. It's it's almost like, I don't know. As a professional, I'm sure that that they can take it. But I wonder how much confidence he has in like even his teammates and his coaches that he got benched and now, you know, uh, someone got hurt and now he's back in. So I, I wonder about that. Yeah, uh, I don't blame you either. I think one of the things I was saying when he got benched originally is that it would be a big blow to his confidence and it would be tough to put him back in. But here we are, week 12, he's in. Nick Foles will be out with a hit pointer. Parth, we're going to make a video about this later and we'll we'll break it down more. But what's your initial reaction to Trubisky coming back for this week? Because it's obviously the biggest news heading into the game. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, I think this move should have been done three weeks ago. Ever since we saw that the offense wasn't producing with Nick Foles, you know, we couldn't get the ball go- moving at all. And Nick Foles was taking a lot of unnecessary sacks. So was Trubisky at times, but at least he had the ability to run out the pocket. Uh, the Bears were missing that ability. Uh, he was, We were missing that scrambling ability. I remember against the Giants game, the first couple drives we had were beautiful. I mean, Trubisky was able to scramble out to his right, dump it off to Montgomery for the score. And then, you know, and then he had that nice scramble. And then I think he had that dot to Darnell in the end zone so you know I think we're gonna uh, hopefully see some of that action again um you know him running around helps the team but again he was he did injure his shoulder um like a couple weeks back so that might limit him a little bit too yeah having the scrambling ability back with Trubisky is going to be big but we're here to talk about the Packers today obviously with our guest Matt so Matt we've seen the Packers offensively rack it up this season they've scored 30.8 points per game racking up 404.8 yards per game Aaron Rodgers we know he's a bad man as Stephen A. Smith says he's on a tear uh even though they're coming off a 34 to 31 OT loss to the Indianapolis Colts in overtime Rodgers has almost thrown for 3,000 yards and 30 touchdowns and we're just past halfway through the season so this offense currently ranks third in the league what's gone so well for Green Bay's offense this season I don't know. It seems like with their offense, like they just come out swinging. Like they've been able to, I think there's only like like one or two times when they didn't score in the first quarter or maybe even the first drive. I I don't know. I'm not a big stat guy, but they, they've been starting off hot. And uh, like last, last week they fell off in the second half offensively and they weren't able to pull it out, had some major mistakes, but uh, I I just think Rogers is on fire. He seems happy. He seems like he's in a good spot and uh, he's balling out. Yeah, I mean, we saw them draft uh, Jordan Love earlier in the season, and Rodgers was a little bit cri- uh, critical of that. But uh, he, he seems like he's doing well, Parth. We know all the weapons that Green Bay has on offense. Aaron Jones leads the way. Also, Devontae Adams has been playing great at wide receiver. They just got Alan Lazard back last week. Devin Funch is out for the season, obviously, but they got some good wide receivers down down the depth chart with St. Brown as well. 
Uh, and then some great tight end play from Robert Tanya and Jay Sternberger uh, in, a, in a good offensive line led by David Batiari. I want to ask you, Parth, what are your thoughts on the Packers offense? Because it's definitely one that packs a punch. Yeah, it's a really good offense. I think it's definitely up there in the rankings. Uh, statistically, I bet they're doing really well, too. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he's one of the best quarterbacks of the of all time. I, I think he's one of the talented quarterbacks of all time. Uh, and then, you know, uh, top wide receiver in Devontae Adams. I think he's the best wide receiver in the league. His route running is phenomenal. And then uh, Aaron Jones has been a great back for them. And then they got guys like MVS, who've been amazing, too. I mean, you know, the Regard, even what happened last game, I think uh, he played well. And then their offensive line led by David Bakhtiari, uh, he's one of the best offensive linemen in the league, and he consistently has been amazing. Yeah, uh, this Packers offense scares me to a certain degree. You know, I think the Bears can hang with them for a while, but we've seen in past years when the Bears' offense slips up, it gets very ugly. So I'm confident that we can neutralize them a bit. Do I think our offense is going to be able to do enough to be able to keep us in this game? Probably not. But heading to the defensive side of the ball, Matt, we've seen that defensively it's been a much different tale of the tape for Green Bay. They've allowed 25.8 points per game to opposing offenses and haven't been too strong at stopping either the run or the pass. Uh, They've allowed 359.6 yards per game, almost 250 in the air and 115 on the ground per average. The defense is currently ranked 18th in the league, so I want to ask you kind of on the flip side of what I asked you recently. What's gone wrong defensively and what needs to improve on that Green Bay defense? Well, like the biggest thing is they can't stop the run like that. that, And that's like why they've been winning is because the offense was able to start so fast and hopefully get the teams uh, to not want to run the ball, to have a little lead on them. (laughs) But yeah, if if, if like you, you seen the Vikings game, like if you got a good running back, like you could just hand it off every play, it seems, and you're going to do some damage. So the key is for the Packers to get a lead, make them not be able to run the ball like that. But uh, yeah, it, it's definitely stopping a run. It's uh, like um, Mike Patton, like everyone, the Packer fans are not happy with him. Uh, I don't know if it's scheme or if it's players, you know what they're doing. Like I, I'm not like a, a film watcher guy, right? I'm not, I'm, I'm not an expert at all, but they definitely have to figure out whatever it is. They have to stop the run. Yeah, and they're going to be going up against David Montgomery in Week 12. He just cleared concussion protocol. I'm not too confident in the Bears' offensive line personally, but Parth, I'm passing it back around to you. We've seen some shaky play from uh, the Packers' defense, a unit that we saw play a little bit better last year. You know, obviously they do have some big names. Kenny Clark, Preston Smith, Christian Kirksey, Zadarius Smith, someone who's always in conversation with Bears fans, him versus Khalil Mack uh, in pass rushers in the NFC North. And then they have a solid back end too. I mean, you, you got to respect all these guys, Jair Alexander, Adrian Amos, the former Bear, Darnell Savage, Kevin King. But we have seen them struggle a bit recently and David Montgomery is going to be back in this one and hopefully the Bears can produce some sort of run game because they're going to have to do that if they want to keep themselves in this one so Parth I want to ask you what do you think about the Packers defense so far this season um it's it's been pretty spotty at times I think they're much better pass defense than run defense uh you know Ronald Jones had a really good game against them I think he had over 100 yards uh, I think Delvin Cook put up 163 yards on them and then last week Jonathan Taylor finally had his breakout game of 90 yards uh he's he had been struggling a while so for him to break out against the Packers uh that run run D is a little spotty I think the Bears could take advantage but knowing the Bears offensive line I doubt we will be able to um it's been tough all year to run the ball I, so I, I don't expect the run game to get any better and then um, their pass defense is pretty good. You know, Adrian Amos, that's a familiar face. And then they got Jerry Alexander, great cornerback. Um, but there's been times where they've been lit up. You know, Philip Rivers had a really good game last week. So that's something just to keep in mind. Yeah, Mitchell Trubisky will definitely be looking to make some revenge this weekend. But yeah, that Green Bay defense, 20th in the league against the rush, 13th in the league against the pass. So you mentioned it, a little bit better of a pass defense than a run defense. It would be really nice to see the Bears get something going rushing, but I don't think they're going to be able to do that on the ground until they fix the offensive line, and that's probably not going to happen until next offseason. I mean, maybe we'll see Eric Cush start. Uh, Cody Whitehair will be back and have a week of practice under him. Also, I would hope at some point they would they would hope to promote Jason Spriggs, a former Packer. So it should be interesting. But uh, you know, I, I'm not too confident that the Bears' offense is going to be able to get much done in this one. I would be pretty surprised. So, Matt, I'm passing it back around to you now. 
Green Bay, it seems like they won't have to do much to win this one. They are facing a pretty stout defense in the Bears that has only allowed 20 points per game this season. So what do you think the Packers need to do to bounce back in Week 12? Well, I think that they have to stop the run. Like, they definitely have to stop yeah. the run. And and Trubisky, like like you mentioned, uh, Trubisky can run. Like, he, he can get around. I think Trubisky is the best option for the Bears uh, playing the Packers because with not stop and run, that also includes the quarterback, getting out of the pocket, doing those things. So they they have to stop that, make them pass. I don't have a ton of faith that uh, the Bears will pass really hard on the on the Packers. But I also think that they could run the ball. I, I'm not sure that the Packers defense slips. And, like, whenever it, it's a game the Packers should win, like, th- that they struggle the hardest. It seems like they play up. I thought they had it in the bag last weekend against Indianapolis. I thought yeah. they slowed down Phillip Rivers, and that's about it, but. Yeah, it was uh that that was one of the most heartbreaking games that I've had in a while, like a regular season wise, because uh like th- that game was over and they just let it slip. So like, especially with a rivalry like the Bears, like it's never an easy game, and it, it shouldn't be anyway. It doesn't oh, matter yeah. because e- e- even this season, the Bears showed that they can play. Like they're not as consistent. They had some, but they had a rough schedule uh, th- these these last few weeks, and. Uh, it's a rivalry game. Packers bear. It doesn't matter. Like even back, like when I was a kid, eighties and nineties, didn't matter the records. Like when you're playing rivalry games, everyone shows up to play. And I know that they're all going to be ready. So this is by no means a gimme for the Packers. They have to really come to play. Yeah. And the bears this season is on the line. They don't want to lose five straight whatsoever. So you know what, for me, I think talking about how the Packers are going to be able to win this one, as much as I don't like to talk about it, I I think if you slow the run, you basically win the game. I still don't trust Mitchell Trubisky to pass the ball whatsoever. I do think that it's interesting. The Bears obviously will still have Bill Lazor calling the plays. He's someone who likes RPO. He's someone who likes play action. So it should be interesting to see how he gets Mitchell Trubisky incorporated outside of the pocket. And that's something that's intriguing to me. Probably the only thing intriguing to me about Mitchell Trubisky coming back. But yeah, uh, I think if the Packers can slow down the run, which they should be able to against a Bears' offensive line that has struggled yet again in 2020, uh, I think they'll be just fine in this one, and their offense will eventually break down the Bears' defense. I think the Bears have a very good defensive unit, but they're not going to be able to hang in there very long. We, we've seen them pitter out in, in different games, and it's 100% not their fault whatsoever. So, Parth, before we talk about how the Bears can win this one, what do you think Green Bay has to do if they want to win this one? It seems like on paper it would be a pretty simple formula. Yeah, they just got to do what they've been doing all year. Um, you know, last week, if they if they put up 31 points on the Bears like they did against the Colts, I think they win the game pretty easily, which is let Aaron Rodgers do his thing, uh, let let Aaron Jones do his thing, you know, uh, Devontae Adams here and there. Uh, their offense is flawless if you look at it. It's just a simple process, and then it gets touchdowns and they win games, and uh, that's all they got to do. Yeah. So obviously the Bears, on the other hand, Matt, are playing for their season in Week 12, and things could get really ugly if they lose their fifth straight. We all know they started 5-1. and one. They're at 5-5 five and five now. But you mentioned it. The Bears have played the Packers really tight, especially since 2018, and you've seen a lot of Packers losses throughout your time. I know you haven't become accustomed to that, but what do you think the Bears need to do if they want a chance in this one? Well, I think that they're obviously, like you mentioned, their, their defense is like their – big point so like they have to try to not let a lead you know don't let the Packers gain a big lead because if the Packers gain a big lead and they can't run the ball at all and they have to just trust Trubisky like and and, and that's the thing too get, get in Trubisky out of the pocket like don't let them just stay back there I think I think they would they would want to move him around a lot but uh yeah I, I think the key thing is the defense has to try to slow down Aaron Rodgers and keep him off the field yeah, absolutely. I got to go ahead and agree with you. Uh, if you can somehow force turnovers, that's what the Bears are going to have to try and do this weekend. We saw a couple turnovers last weekend. I know Rodgers did throw an interception, and also MVS did have a fumble at the end of that game. But I think any turnovers in this game probably help the Bears. Uh, and I think on offense, you know, I say it every week, but you have to try and establish a run game. We've seen the Packers struggle constantly against the run probably throughout the last month. And it's going to really help Trubisky if David Montgomery can have a game. Uh, you know, we haven't seen him have a breakout game essentially all season. But if if it was going to come at any time, I think this week would be huge coming out of concussion protocol. A game that probably will decide how the season goes moving forward. It can determine the fate of Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace in Chicago. So 
Very important that the Bears try and get a run game going this weekend. So, Parth, I'm going to pass it back around to you before we wrap this one up. But what do you think the Bears have to do if they want to pull this one out in Week 12? I think you mentioned it. We got to establish the run game. We got to help Trubisky out. You know, he hasn't played in a while. He's also coming off an injury. Uh, it's been a while since he's played. Uh, he's got to get back on that rhythm, and it's going to take some time. Um, it's not going to be easy. And we know this offense hasn't been even good. Uh, we've seen 149 total yards produced in a game, and last week was even more rough. I felt like. Yeah, so hopefully it gets better. You know, it's gotten worse uh, every so, every week so far. So I think with a new quarterback. Hopefully we can uh, establish the run game a little bit more and then help Trubisky, you know, get his RPOs and hopefully he can hit a deep ball to open up the coverage. Yeah, it would be nice. Uh, I don't trust Trubisky's deep ball essentially. But Matt, before we end this one off, we, we don't give our predictions until the end of the week, but we always ask guests when we have them on to give their score prediction in this one. So who do you have coming up on, coming out on top on this one and, and what's your score prediction for this one? I haven't really thought of a score prediction yet, but uh, off the top of my head, I would say Packers 31, uh, Bears 17. Giving us 17 is quite generous, my friend. Yeah, well, (laughs) I think that, like, it seems like the Packers, like, when they do get a lead, they kind of let off a little bit, which irritates me. And uh, giving teams a chance to come back. But, like, with the rivalry, too, like, I just think the Bears are going to play better than, like, I think, you know, like, that I say or, like, a lot of Packer fans think. Because it, it's a robbery. Like Trubisky, he's gonna be hungry. Like he, this is like his chance. Like he was benched. Now he's getting another opportunity. Like he's gonna be ready. Like he's gonna. I, I'm not saying he's gonna ball out, but he's definitely gonna try. He's gonna give it his I'm, all. Yeah, he's playing for teams to sign him next year, assuming that he's out of Chicago. So yeah, yeah. I mean they'll be he'll he'll be ready to play. And I, I think the whole team, like like you say, they're five and five. Like they're gonna be ready. Like it's a robbery. They all hate the Packers. Like they, it's got to be like just annoying to them. Like everyone talks about the Packers, no one talks about the Bears, and uh, I'm sure that they really want to hand it to them. Yeah. Well, Matt Romage, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you, buddy. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Real quick though, uh, dude. I, one thing, like I talk a lot of smack about the Bears. <laughs> and I, I, I was saying this on Twitter. I said that, that that's the difference between Bears fans and Viking fans. Like Bears oh, fans, like we go back and forth. It's all fun. You invite me on the podcast. Viking fans like get so mad and they like send me like threats and like not really threats, but like just like trolling me, crying, like always blaming the refs, like even games that they're not even in, you know, they, 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 that's like the big difference. I respect bear fan Viking fans to me are just clowns. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 we can't really talk to Vikings fans after what happened in week 11, but, or, uh, excuse me, week 10, but you know what? Uh, I, I gotta go ahead and agree with you. I, I, I personally prefer talking to Packers fans over Vikings fans. I think there's some more reasonable Packers fans and Vikings fans always think that they're going to do absolutely everything possible and go win the Super Bowl. But I don't know. What do you think, Parth? I think the Lions fans are the worst. Oh. It's actually, it's actually kind of scary how bad they can be. I know a couple Lions fans, and then I've seen a couple Lions fans. We hopped on that Lions podcast, too. They seemed overly optimistic about their team the whole entire time. Yeah, and I was in like, week one, yeah. And then in the week one, and I was like, oh, my God, they're way too optimistic. And then, then we come back with Trubisky, and I'm like, dang. Like, I mean. Maybe they maybe, weren't overly optimistic. Maybe it was us. <laughs> but, like, All I right. mean, Lions fans, I think, are the worst to me. Then I think, I think <laughs> Packers fans are the most fun to talk to because there's a history behind the rivalry. It's just not just straight smack there's there's a huge there's a huge history which makes it a lot more fun and meaningful all right i totally agree with that yeah well if you guys want more from matt you can head over to his twitter at matt Ramage, also on instagram matt Ramage underscore and you can find the links in the description to the ramble and matt Ramage podcast if you want more from us you can head over to our website beardown.com we're posting columns articles and blogs every day on our website nowadays to get you guys ready for the bears week 12 matchup with the packers if you want to find us on social media at bear down on instagram and twitter we're announcing a giveaway very soon, and you can find the links to all of me and Parth's social media down in the description. Parth Shaw, man, we're getting close. Uh, it's already Wednesday night. We're recording this a little bit later than we normally do, but any last words before we sign off? Um, just about to watch Indiana uh, play some play, open their basketball season, and then, yeah, that's about it. Uh, hopefully the Bears can pull off this win on Sunday night. I think that would be a historic win, and then tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm excited to watch these games tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely a weird holiday, Matt. You're in quarantine. Any, any, uh, Thanksgiving plans or just getting a, like a frozen pizza? <laughs> no, I, I got, uh, 
my wife got a turkey. Like before we went into quarantine, like right before we we went grocery shopping, got the turkey. Luckily, so it'll it'll just be just be me, me, and my wife, my kids, and uh, we'll just do a little Thanksgiving, a COVID Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. You know, at this point, we just pick and choose what we can get, and uh, can't really control the rest. But Bears fans and Packers fans alike, because I know there are some of you tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Maltby. Bears and Packers fans both, do us a favor. Continue to stay safe during these tough times. And to the Bears fans still tuning in, do us a favor and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.